My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Oh, yeah, we're in a slowdown. There have to be reasons for stocks to keep going up besides the tailwind of an economic uplift because there are no tailwinds. Sure, the economy is reopening all over the country. We had a great jobs number last Friday, but we still have 13 percent unemployment in this country. And as much as we want to reopen to produce a ton of jobs, I doubt we'll see much of that in the sectors that have suddenly turned red hot. That's why the Dow dipped 300 points today and the S&P shed 0.78 percent, while the tech heavy Nasdaq actually advanced 0.29 percent. Stocks can only go up so much based on the fact that the world isn't ending. Let's take the two most exciting areas in this market until today, airlines and cruise lines. Until today, those things were juggernauts, relentlessly marching toward their old pre-COVID highs. Every morning, their stocks would get bid up to absurd levels as buyers, especially neophyte, internet-goaded wagerers bet on one thing and one thing only, that someone else would come in and buy from them even higher. That game worked for a while, but today it stopped, and both groups got eviscerated. Why? Because when you invest based on the greater fool theory, by the way, that's the name of the theory, sooner or later, you run out of fools. Don't get me wrong. There are times when the greater fool theory does indeed work and even work for a while. I'm not some scold who'll give you a hard time for making money the wrong way. And the gains in these groups are still very real. But if you're going to play this game for the long haul, I want you to be better at it. For example, we've seen endless buying in, uh, let's pick one, American Airlines. Okay, that's, it took the stock from 10 to 20 bucks. It was in the high 20s uh, or around there before the pandemic even broke out. Uh, now, the, th- the thing is, uh, uh, American had $34 billion in debt, 10 billion more than Delta or United, and then had to take down another $4.75 billion as part of the bailout. It's burning about $70 million a day, though they're trying to get that down to be, uh, say, $50 million by the end of this month. I can understand how gamblers might be attracted to this stock. Among the major airlines, it had the lowest price in terms of the absolute dollar amount. And that's something that's always attractive to speculators. They like stocks that are 10, not stocks that are 3,000. Plus, the company put out a press release the other day titled, American Airlines Increases Domestic Flying for Summer Travel Season, Begins Reopening Admirals Clubs and Increases Flexibility, end quote. But you got to remember. They're growing off a very small base. In May, American carried 110,000 people a day domestically, up from just 32,000 a day in April, 15% load factor then. A year before, though, they carried about 500,000 in an average month. The domestic business is still awful, and internationally, the numbers keep falling. Not long ago, Boeing's CEO went on the Today Show and warned that a major carrier would fail. Well, you shrug your shoulder, you look like this, but many people must assume that. The CEO of Boeing is talking about American. This was in the worst shape. And while the airlines are quick to tell you that they have better air circulation than most buildings, the simple fact is that most people regard planes as COVID incubators. And the circulation doesn't matter if you're sitting next to someone who is sick. I go into all this because American is the classic kind of stock that you buy if you believe we're in a terrific V-shaped recovery. A filled plane makes a heck of a lot more money than a plane that's only 55% full. When all your planes are full, man, you are making a fortune. But when you're in a recession, even if you're coming out of a recession, well, you don't see tons of full planes. You're not supposed to buy the plane stocks right here. And that's before we even account for the impact of the virus, which will have a chilling effect on air travel uh, until we get the vaccine. So what do you buy if you're feeling better about the economy, which is absolutely bottoming, but still not producing enough meaningful wind to truly bolster the kind of cyclical companies that had suddenly become very popular on Wall Street, again, particularly among neophytes? It's easy. You buy the stocks of secular growth stories, the companies with powerful internal engines that will let them sail without a tailwind. You want the stock equivalent of a steamship, not a sailboat that is at the mercy of the economic weather. Good analogy for you. Which one stood out today? All right. Let's start out with Facebook. 
You know, I've been a big backer of Facebook ever since the company stopped being embroiled in politics and started recognizing that its real constituents are the millions of small and medium-sized businesses that use its platform and started supporting them. Right now, the company's launching Facebook shops. It's turned out to be a gigantic hit, according to Heather Bellini, the Cracker Jack software analyst at Goldman Sachs, who published a fantastic piece of research this morning explaining how much Facebook will make from its small and medium-sized business initiatives. The stock's been flying ever since they announced this thing, and they did it on our show. But the analysts have only just started to recognize how huge it will be. At a time when people are understandably reluctant to shop in person, making it easier to sell things via Facebook and Instagram was a brilliant move. Then there's Apple. This stock's been running, hitting a new all-time high today, not because the economy should be open or because of surging Chinese sales or because of some retail sales uh, in, in their stores. No, it's because Apple Pay has taken off thanks to the pandemic. People are afraid of getting COVID from cash or credit cards or keypads. They want contactless payments. At the same time, Apple's service revenue stream is growing by leaps and bounds. and shows no signs of stopping even as the pandemic gets tamped down. Then there's AMD. That was today's biggest gainer in the S&P 500. Why? Because their chief competitor, NVIDIA, selected AMD's chips for the next generation artificial intelligence system. It is huge. So it's NVIDIA's system, which is why that stock for it, too. Artificial intelligence... No need for a tailwind. On top of that, by the way, there's a chance that AMD might be taking uh, some Apple business away from Intel. Again, that's a market share win, not an economic win. Finally, there's Amazon. Two firms raised their price targets for the online Colossus to $3,000 today, with notes that showered Amazon with praise about how deep it's got its hooks into the consumer. Wells Fargo says, and I quote, We believe that Amazon's continued build-out of last mile fulfillment capacity and a gradual return to more hectic work and school schedules among consumers will likely shift momentum back toward rapid delivery. Amazon One Day Prime and Prime Now from competitors' store-based fulfillment options, end quote. In other words, Amazon spent a fortune to maintain its lead in delivery during this period, and now they're poised to clobber their omnichannel competitors. Bank of America says something pretty similar, that the money Amazon spent on fulfillment this year typically does precede accelerating unit growth. So they're looking for increased revenues and earnings. Again, that's not an economic tailwind. It's an internal tailwind of Amazon's own making. We know there's a day trade frenzy to buy the worst, to deify the most loathsome oil companies and the tanker stocks, to worship at the order of the bankrupt rental car company or the cruise lines that still can't cruise. These companies don't just need tailwinds. They need Category 4 hurricanes to keep moving. But the secular growth stories, here's the bottom line. Apple, Facebook, Amazon, AMD, NVIDIA, they don't need no stinking tailwinds. They create their own and ride them to much greener pastures. That's why I keep going back to them, and you should, too. Patrick in Washington, D.C. Patrick. Jim, thanks for having me on. First time caller here. Excellent. Hey, Dan from D.C., I also just want to say thanks uh, for your efforts to bring on a wide range of even-keeled legislators uh, like Speaker Pelosi and others. Thank you. Um, You facilitate a much more informative conversation than could ever be had by tweet. Uh, and I think we all appreciate it. Uh, you're very um, kind. It is a straight. It you. is tough to try to come up with a balance. I'm glad you're thinking I'm doing it. I know I strive to do it every day. How can I help? Uh, well, I actually wanted to get your take on Moderna, uh, MRNA. Um, I know you know a lot about it. Uh, Moderna is one of many, many players in the COVID-19 vaccine and treatment race right now. Right. Uh, the playing field is packed. We've seen a lot of short-term high flyers come and go. Right. Uh, but for several weeks, Moderna has been considered to be a front runner in that field. Um, recently, they hired a new CFO, I guess, in an apparent angle towards a more commercial stance. Um, but since then, that was like 10 days, 14 days ago. Um, since then, mRNA has plummeted a bit uh, from around right. 50 plus right. to yeah, to about like sub 57. Well, as see, of Patrick, morning. you know, well, they put out yeah. those results of that uh, and they were too promotional. They said that they had an eight for eight, something good news. That's not enough of a sample. And it was something that Dr. Fauci didn't like. And they also sold uh, some of their people sold a huge amount of stock and they sold stock. These are all things that are very suboptimal in my eyes. And while I do wish Moderna the best of luck, uh, the, those characteristics are not what I like and were very ill advised. Let's go to Fred in Virginia. Fred. Hello, Jim. Booyah. Booyah. I'm Fred from, from Virginia. I recently purchased shares in the new IPO, Zoom, for technology. What do you think about the future of this company's stock? And should I buy more at today's closing price of $50? Uh, I think it's a real good company. Um, 
I, I think that Henry's doing a great job. And I'd say most important, all the IPOs that come at the beginning of a cycle like we're having right now, they are going to give money away to get you back into the casino. And Zoom Info was underpriced. And that's a very positive sign that means it's still underpriced. Let's go to David in Illinois, please. David. Booyah, Jim. Booyah. Yeah, I wanted to find out what your opinion is on VSTO, Vista Outdoors, as a play for social distancing. They make everything you need to take with you in those RVs you talked about yesterday. Yes, the they do. Yes, they uh, do. But that's why I'm still going to go to Camping World. Because I think that Marcus Lemonis has got the best, uh, let's say he's got, he's got the best handle on that particular situation. Go with Lemonis. Stock's already, uh, he just bought some more stock. He just bought, bought more stock on Friday. I, I say Marcus, I say Camping World. All right, secular growth stories like these stocks don't need any tailwinds. That's what I like here. Oh, man, buddy, tonight, I'm eyeing Stitch Fix after earnings to see if the company can tie up its loose ends. Don't miss my exclusive with the CEO. Then Chewy just reported after the close. I'll find out if you're barking up the right tree with an investment in the stock that you know I've liked for a long time. And as COVID-19 prompts a digital shift for businesses, can another one of my favorites, DocuSign, take advantage of the move? I've got the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.